After 18,000 years, during times of great pestilence and upheaval, he returns. <coughs> Hell yeah, ya boys, the armored weasel is back. First of all, I'm going to have to apologize for the microphone quality because I am doing this with a shitty USB webcam. I don't have anything else at the moment, so this will have to do. Um, I wanted to share with you today one of my projects I've been doing recently. I started this in the summer, but I never got around to finishing it. And I hope actually that in sharing this with you guys, though nobody's actually watching, but that doesn't matter, that my own thoughts will be sort of mm, organized so that I will know how to move forward with this thing. Because uh, the materials I've used were quite expensive. I wanted to do a good job. And now they've just been gathering dust in, in the pile in the corner of my room. So, like, time to do something with it. And I also wanted to make YouTube videos because what the hell else do we have to do in this time, day and age? I mean, nothing. So, first of all, I made a pattern based on a you know, fairly traditional lacquer and steel breastplate Japanese style. I didn't even explain what it is that the project is. I should do that first. It all started back in summer when I was playing Ghost of Tsushima for the first time. And I was really impressed with how they made the armors look. They looked really cool. I've always been a fan of ancient Japan, so it just kind of struck a chord with me. And I was inspired to make my own Japanese style armor. So first of all, I started doing some research. As I said, I wanted to do a good job. And I came up with a sort of basic pattern that I wanted to use. And as for the construction, I wanted to mix the lacquer and steel, not riveted, uh, the woven construction with the silk thread and everything. And I wrote it down, uh, Kusari armor, which is Japanese chainmail, essentially. I wanted to sort of mix the construction of using chainmail as the hard outer layer that will actually stop swords and a layer of leather backing essentially so that that will keep the shape and add a little bit of shock resistance as well because chainmail on its own is very flexible of course and not that useful when it comes to stopping blunt impact blunt force weapons and everything so this is the pattern for the breastplate plate that i came up with as you can see i've already punched it full of holes for the threading as well as colored it and oiled it. This is the breastplate. I'll stand up so you guys can actually see what that will look like. They're supposed to go like this. And I really like that this shape on traditional Japanese armor. So I, I thought I'd go with that. I think the fit's pretty good. As you can see, it doesn't extend all the way here. I actually have a side plate that will go here. And this will also keep it in shape a little bit because this tapers this way while this is straight so that will be it will sort of make a box like this and then this is the back plate a little bit more simple and cut a little bit lower so that you'll have a little bit more room to move your arms the shoulder piece which I have here this will come like this as you can see everything is punched full of holes and that is because this is what I want to put over it this are the chainmail is part of a what do you call it a shirt that I had that I don't really fit that well anymore so I thought I'd take it apart. It is a valuable material, so I didn't want it to go to waste. And if you layer that on top and you thread it through with leather tongue, which I have here, I wanted to use silk, but that got very expensive very quickly. So I uh, decided not to do that. And um, I read somewhere that leather thongs were used earlier in Japanese history, so I thought, well, that's fine then. I'll just use that. I can always change them later. Which also brings me to the first problem I had in continuing this. I'm at the point right now where I want 
to essentially if I want to move forward I have to start the threading process which as you can see there there are a lot of holes in that thing so it will probably take a while but that is not the most important part really of why I got stuck um, the main reason is that I didn't know what color to make the threads <laughs> I did a couple of experiments um, with blue and green and black and brown as more basic colors and I mean blue looked very good green absolutely did not um, also because of my limited choice in leather dyes although that entire bucket is filled with different colors of leather dye um, blue looked best because it's a sort of a pale blue that colors really well with the uh, it gives a sort of worn but still colorful look um, but I think I am going to go or should go with brown because that is a little bit more basic so it matches well with all sorts of styles of costume you want to wear underneath um, you can even use it for a LARP western sort of costume actually um, it looks a lot like the Witcher armors in The Witcher 3 uh, so that may work and I think that's what I'm going to go for but it's just something that I got stuck I couldn't really think that through to a conclusion <laughs> unsure why on top of that yeah this is another problem as you can see I've only lain the chainmail on top of it for a little bit now it, it, it's been there on there for maybe two minutes and I think you can see that right here it is already starting to scratch and that is um, not necessarily a problem but it is a little bit wasteful maybe because it's expensive leather I bought good quality and you don't really want it to scratch up all the time it may actually wear through at some point although it is thick leather and of course once you thread it and, and secure it to the leather it won't shift as much so the scratches will be quite less too but I was also thinking about a way to actually prevent the scratching altogether um, by for instance lacquering the leather as Japanese armors were also lacquered I thought that that could work but I don't have access to actual Japanese lacquer here and the best alternative that I could find was shellac as that was also used to make fake Japanese articles back in Europe essentially lacquer um, well the the instead of lacquer they used shellac and I have a jar here and I actually tried to lacquer a piece of leather well to shellac a piece of leather actually but it didn't really work um, the shellac dried and it did form a hard coating but it wasn't it was too brittle as soon as you move the leather and bend it a little bit it all started cracking and the effect of the hard layer was essentially gone it's still scratched so that was mm, not a success so I think I should just ignore that sort of and accept the fact that the leather will be mm, beaten up a little bit I mean it is armor it is not necessarily in the first place meant to look pretty although Japanese armor was mostly meant to look pretty especially after the Sengoku Jidai and the rise of the Tokugawa Shogunate mm, armor was mostly ceremonial though that is not entirely true they were still in fighting and everything I'm not an expert on Japanese history but the main takeaway here is that armor was supposed to look pretty too as it was a main point of pride of any samurai family how to marry the two I am uncertain I, I tried with the thonging uh, with the different color make it a little bit more colorful but as I said it, it greatly reduces the flexibility of the armor itself and I don't just want it to be uh, maybe I just want too much that might be it did want to show you guys one more thing and we have the armor here of course that's only fairly limited protection it stops here that's where the bendy bit is so you don't want it to be stuck there and then you have these things that will go underneath but I still need to color those 
and punch them full of holes so as to be able to thread them. Ugh. And that'll be the complete breastplate and backplate, of course. Um, once I figured out how this worked, I wanted to also make shoulder pads. I forgot how they are called in Japanese now. And maybe armored sleeves, if I have chainmail left, that would be really cool. Also, because you, you can use those sleeves for Western armors. If you want to make a sort of stealth character and design a costume for a stealth character, armored sleeves are quite um, in theme. And they would actually be functional, at least to a certain degree, and against certain weapons. The sort of weapons that a stealth character would um, encounter. So that's pretty cool, but I got stuck and haven't really done anything else. <laughs> Although, that's not entirely true, because I have done a lot of things outside of this specific project. I have made a, a medieval belt that I can show you. I have made a couple of kimonos. Mm, Kimono-inspired garments, I should say, because the pattern is not the same. Um, also, to wear underneath this armor, so it's sort of related. I made them in the first place to be worn separately, but who knows, might be able to figure out how I can combine them. I have a pretty good idea, and I think that will work. Um, I still have a couple of things to review from way before, like this dagger that you've already seen once in a previous video. I've never properly reviewed it. Um, Although it has already been reviewed on YouTube, that's kind of funny. Scholar Gladiatoria also made a video on him. Him. Are they getting sentient? I hope not. Uh, I have a couple of robes that I can show you. Maybe jackets as well, I don't know. If I want to, I can make a lot of videos and we'll see how it goes. So I'm going to think about this armor some more. Hopefully actually find the inspiration to begin working on it again. If you guys have any suggestions on how to proceed, let me know. That might be helpful as well, at least as a sort of thought exercise. And I suppose I'll see you guys next time. Armored Weasel out! Shouldn't do that. Not even with two hands. Armored Weasel out! <laughs>